Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new SpeedyB F7 flight controller. Now, this is the old one flight controller, and what separates it from the rest is that it has Bluetooth built in, and you could configure everything through the SpeedyB application without a wire. So, let's get started. Huge shout out to PCB Way for sponsoring this video and right now they're running a pretty massive promotion. If you're looking to get your PCBs done such as for example my open hardware flight controller or anything else you can go ahead and check them out. I'll have links to them down below. So this is the all new SpeedyB F7 here and it has quite a lot going on for it. For example it has the Bluetooth functionality. It also has an F7 microcontrol unit. It's also all in one flight controller. It even has 9 volt regulators on board. However, I don't know why the hell did they choose an ICM gyro. I don't know, but I guess we'll be testing this very soon and see how well it performs. Now, the things they provide you in the package are actually very well thought through. However, it is missing one thing, a low ESR capacitor, but you can pick those up anywhere. I'll have some link down below. So they give you a pre-made XT60 here. I really like the length of this because any longer can introduce some noise into your uh, system. So it's great to see it that it's at least this long and you'll just definitely probably make it shorter or keep it as is. Huge plus into that perspective. Now if we open the bag right here, they give you stuff as equal to what Maytech would actually do. So let's see what they have here. So what I really love seeing is they gave us the connector that will allow you to connect even a 4-in-1 ESE, even though this is all in one flight controller. And if you take a look at the other side, we see we do have the connectors left in place here. So we could grab any of these two that would fit our 4 one ESE and route the wires accordingly. And you should be good to go with very minimal soldering, especially on a 4 in one ESE. And I really love seeing that. And that is really great attention to detail here. Now let's move this to the side. And they also provide us with some nylon standoffs here, which we're also going to move to the side here. Nothing too special about that. However, the rubber gummies here, they provided, there's two different types, which is really great to see here. Uh, they give us one that will give us some extra space, as you can tell right there. So this is uh, this can be useful for a lot of things. And they also give you just a basic one that takes uh, less space, just like this one here. So I really like seeing that, actually. It's very well thought through, and um, they are paying attention to detail here. And it's just something that speaks really great about this since it is a pretty expensive little uh, all-around flight controller here. So now let's do a quick overview of the components that are on the board before going in to showing you how to set this up on an FPV quadcopter. Now, as you can tell here, it is using the F7, the baby F7. So that's really great here that it's up to date. Uh, it's using the ICM gyro, unfortunately, even though it's capped at 8K through Betaflight. So uh, maybe it's somewhat feature-proof if Betaflight does decide, decide to jump to 32 kilohertz here. And uh, there's really nothing else on top of this board here. But if we flip it over, we got a lot more things going on for us. We do have a short resistor for current reading if you are not going to be using a 4-in-1 ESC. We also also have our uh, BLE Bluetooth uh, chip right here. So this is the chip for the Bluetooth functionality with the antenna. I think this is the antenna right here. And they also have a flash memory right here, which is really great. Our OSD, even a barometer. So overall, it's a uh, it's really nice. It has a lot of things going on for it. I really like the extra memory here, since obviously there is no room for a black box SD card expansion. So now, how would we connect this into our quadcopter? Now I'm going to cover how to connect the video transmitter, camera, iBus, SBus. Uh, smart audio tramp, whatever. We're going to cover that right now. So first of all, what you always need to look for is the arrow. And as we can tell, the arrow is pointing that way and it's on this side, which means the arrow should be up and pointing towards the camera. So this would be installed in your quadcopter like this and you should be fine. We have the USB up on the left, which is really great. And let's see how we would go about doing this. So First of all, let's start with the ESC connection. So if you're not using a 4-in-1 ESC, you're going to have to use these pads. Now, this flight controller also acts as a power distribution board, which means you don't need another board if you're going to use separate single ESCs here. So we see we have our power for our ESCs. Usually ESCs would have two fat wires, which are a black and a red wire, and then they would have possibly three or two other smaller wires, which we'll cover also. So the fat red wire would go to the positive, the fat black wire would go to the negative here, and then you're left with either two 
or three wires that are smaller than the two main ones. And those would be either signal and ground or signal, ground, and telemetry. And this has you covered in all of those places. Now, what I recommend doing is if you take the black wire, the small black wire, and wrap it around with your thicker black wire, and that's what she said, and to place it right there. <laughs> and then next, you want your signal wire, which will go to s pad. so this would be S1, and if your ESC had telemetry, then you're going to want to set it up on the R5, which would be this pad right here. Same thing goes here, positive, negative. R5 is going to be the telemetry again. And this is the signal for the motor here. And same thing goes for the rest. Now the battery is going to go back here. So you would bring your XT60 connector that they provided in the package. And you would set it up. The black goes to the minus and the positive goes to the uh, red right here. And if you wanted to install, I'd highly recommend it, you install a low ESR capacitor, you'd want to install them right there. The negative side will go here and the positive side will go here along with these wires. So keep that in mind. It's very important you do that. So now let's jump to the camera. So the camera is really great because it is also somewhat future proof because we have the ability to control the camera's OSD, which is a separate OSD for each camera to change its settings. And you'll be able to do this because it's been broken out for you in a really nice way. So here we see we have VI and that's really great also that it's in front of the quadcopter because that's where our camera is going to be. VI would be the yellow wire for your camera and that's where it would be installed. Next the red wire which would be 5 volt we would install that right there. Next would be the black wire which would be ground that would be installed right here. Now the OSD wire if your camera has OSD you don't need to connect this but if you wanted to you can. You would go to CC which is camera control. That's where that would be installed. Now, if for some reason you wanted to give battery voltage for your camera, which is highly not recommended because they're more susceptible to noise on battery voltage. But instead of 5 volt, you can give it to VBAT here. And again, it's not recommended, but maybe you have a different use case and you could easily access that right there, which is also really great. Next, we're going to cover the video transmitter. Now, this is where it gets interesting. This thing has a 9 volt regulator, which means it has a higher probability of giving you cleaner video feed than any other basically flight controller because it has a dedicated filtered 9 volt regulator so it's a stable voltage because noise comes from fluctuation of voltage but here you have a static dedicated 9 volt which is really nice and it's better than 12 volt because back then we used to have OSD blackouts, which means when the power of the battery goes below 12 volts on a punch out, it would disconnect that uh, 12 volt regulator and you'll get a black video feed until the until the VTX gets the power back up again. So 9 volt is that really beautiful sweet spot. So the way we would connect the video transmitter would be VO. This would be the yellow wire going to your video transmitter. 9 volt would be the red wire going to your video transmitter. Now there's two types of video transmitters. There's battery voltage video transmitter. There's also 5 volt video transmitters. If if you have a 5 volt, you can give 5 volt there. If you have the battery voltage, then it would be 9 volt here. And how do you know the difference? Well, it'll tell you. This will only take 5 volts. And then the other one will tell you it takes 7 to like 26 plus volts. That's usually what I call battery voltage VTX. You just put set that up right there. And then next, you're going to need the black wire, which will go right here, which is ground. So let's say you wanted to use smart audio, which is the function that allow you to change your video transmitters channel through the on screen display without going to it and pressing the button and trying to get there while the whole thing is armed with the propellers on, which is a really nice feature where you'd want to install that would be right here. So your smart audio wire would go to the T4 or your tramp or whatever protocol your video transmitter might have would go right there. And you should be good to go. Next, let's cover iBus and SBus. However, I don't think this thing has a 3.3 volt regulator for Spectrum users. Um, so we're going to cover both SBus and iBus. It's going to be the same exact thing. And we're like, how is that possible? Well, because this is an F7 flight controller, F7s are able to read iBus and SBus from the same place, which is really nice here. Now, personally, where I would go is I would just go right here. So we have 5 volt, which would be the red wire for your iBus or SBus receiver. G would be the ground, which is the black wire for your iBus or SBus receiver. And then the signal of the iBus or the SBus will go to the R1. And in the serial RX, you would set UR1 as serial RX. And then go ahead, go to the configuration and choose whether it's iBus or iBus and you should be good to go. Now we also have a bunch more UARTs, actually three UARTs available. However, you need to take something into consideration with UART5 here. So we have R5 and T5, but if you remember, we were talking about the ESCs, we also have R5 here, R5 here, and just R5 everywhere. 
So if you are using ESE telemetry, then basically the R5 and the T5 here will be useless because they are being utilized for the ESE telemetry and you will not be able to use them for anything else. So keep that in mind. Same thing goes with the smart audio. If you took T4, you're not going to be able to use R4 for anything else because that's it. This USB port has been taken. That's how you should think of these and you will not be able to use that. So you are left with, I believe after the video transmitter, you are left with one more UART here which is T2 and R2, and you should be able to use those for something else. And they also give us more five volt regulators. And we also have the I2C protocol here. If you had some sensors you wanted to connect, which is really great. Now, if you wanted to connect the buzzer, it's really simple right here. We have the buzzer plus and the buzzer minus. You're good to go. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and connect, let's just say LEDs, how would you do this? What you'd want to do is you'd actually go with the red wire for the LED on the buzzer plus, then go to the ground with the black wire, and then give the LED signal wire to the LED right here, and you should be good to go. And that should basically cover this whole thing here. And we also have a dedicated RSSI pad right here on the bottom, which could be used for anything. And also, if you're going to be connecting, let's just say, for example, a 4-in-1 ESC, you don't have to use this connector. They also have everything broken out right here, which is really useful for a lot of people. The current sensing, the telemetry, motors 1 through 4, battery voltage and ground which is really, really great. Now keep in mind, if you are using a 4-in-1 ESC, this needs battery voltage. Do not give it 5 volts or it just won't boot. So nothing bad will happen. It just won't boot. This thing needs battery voltage in order to operate because it has a 9-volt regulator and that's how it's made. So keep that in mind. And again, everything's linked down below. If I missed something, let me know down in the comment section. Overall, the execution looks really great. The spacing between the pads is really really good especially for a newcomer except this might be a little bit tricky the positive and negatives i think they're a bit too close to each other but um i think you'll be able to figure it out and you'll be fine in that perspective and well that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one peace out